Hi, welcome back to the lecture series on abstract major theory. Today, uh, in this lecture, uh, we will discuss product major. Product major. Okay, uh, throughout this section, uh, uh, XS mu and uh, Y sigma nu. Uh, there are two fixed major spaces okay throughout this section throughout this section access mu and and y sigma nu will be two fixed major spaces will be two will be two fixed major spaces now this uh, these accent sigma they are uh, summering uh, we will define now product summering the product summering the product summary which uh, we will denote by S tensor sigma as tensor sigma these are the subsets of X cross Y subsets of X cross Y is defined by is defined by S tensor sigma is equal to A cross P it's a set of the uh, cross product subsets uh, where this A it is in sigma and B it is in S and B is in sigma okay this is S tensor sigma and this is summary uh, the properties of summary can easily be verified and the members of this S tensor sigma they are also called rectangles the members of S tensor sigma are called rectangles are called rectangles okay to verify to verify that S tensor sigma is a summary we use we use we use the following identities we use the following identities what are those identities? The first identity is A cross B intersection C cross D is equal to A intersection A1 A intersection C sorry A intersection C cross uh, B intersection D B intersection D and the second identity is A cross B the set difference C cross D this is equal to A it's a union of the following sets uh, it's A minus C1 minus C that's the set difference it's cross product with B okay then union a intersection c it's cross product with uh, b minus b1 it's cross product with b minus b1 
So these two identities they can be easily verified and I think uh, we have already done these identities in in the first course of major theory. Uh, so these are already done. By using these two identities we can easily verify that S cross sigma is a semiring. The first property is trivial. Uh, since we have to show that uh, this S tensor sigma is closed with respect to the intersection, that's trivial because whenever A cross B belongs to S tensor sigma and C cross D belongs to S tensor sigma, then their intersection is uh, it's equal to A intersection C. Since A intersection C is in S, as A is in S, C is in S, and S is a ring. And similarly, B is in sigma, D is in sigma, so therefore their intersection is also in sigma. So which means that uh, this member is in S tensor sigma, therefore it is closed with respect to S tensor sigma. And the second property we need to show that the difference of two members of S tensor sigma can be written as the finite disjoint union of members of S tensor sigma. That is again trivial because uh, this one A minus C, it is a, A is in S, okay, this A is in S, C is in S, S is a semi ring. So A minus C can be written as finite disjoint union of members of uh, this S tensor S. And now this a minus c cross b, so this also can be uh, this and this can be written as a finite disjoint union of members of S tensor sigma. And uh, this union, uh, this b minus b1, it's uh, b is a member of sigma, b1 is a member of sigma. So b minus b1 can be written as finite disjoint union of members of sigma. Now it's a intersection c cross b minus c. So therefore this one can be written as finite disjoint union of members of S tensor sigma. So that means uh, this difference, uh, difference of two members of S tensor sigma can be written as finite disjoint union of members of S tensor sigma. So hence uh, this uh, S tensor sigma is a semi. So uh, uh, you have to verify these, uh, uh, the, uh, you have to first check these identities and uh, then you have to verify the properties of uh, properties of our S tensor sigma to be a semi ring. So verify your setup. Verify this yourself. So this is an exercise for you. Uh, it's very simple, not uh, too difficult, uh, because these two identities they have already they are already done in in the first course of major theory. Now you had to check. Uh, you had to use these two identities to verify the properties uh, for S tensor sigma to be a semi ring. Okay. Now, uh, 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 we uh, also uh, make the following assumption here uh, throughout this uh, this section. Uh, we use this identity. We make this assumption zero into infinity. We treat this as zero. Okay. This is our assumption. Uh, 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 we should keep this thing in mind that zero into infinity is equal to zero in our case. Okay, uh, now next uh, uh, we try uh, to define uh, the major on that product semi ring. Okay, so that's the next term actually. So the statement of the theorem is uh, this is theorem 1 of this section. Let's see, theorem 1. The set function. Uh, the set function the set function uh, mu cross nu from s tensor sigma to 0 to infinity defined by now this S tensor, it's a semi ring, so we define our set function on that semi ring by by uh, mu cross nu of a cross b. It's equal to mu of a into nu of b. Okay, we show that this set function uh, for a cross b for a cross b it's a member of the product semi ring product semi ring is a semi ring we show that this function is a semi ring is a it satisfies the properties of a semi ring okay so this can be thought of as uh, the generalization of the area or you can say volume uh, 
then uh, it's actually the generalization of area here uh, so if you if you thought these two a and b they are the subsets of real line r then this is a uh, and uh, say suppose these are intervals uh, then uh, if you take the Lebesgue measure then the then the then the measure of the interval will be its length so its length into length which is called the area so we can thought this as the generalization of the area actually so uh, let's uh, prove this uh, uh, prove these uh, properties uh, for this uh, set function to verify that uh, this set function is a major we had to prove the we had to prove two properties first property its uh, value for the uh, for the amplitude set is equal to zero so first property we have we have mu cross nu of the amplitude set so this amplitude set it can be written as it can be written as phi cross phi now uh, you apply the definition here mu of phi into nu of phi both are equal to zero because mu and nu are the majors actually so mu cross nu of the amplitude uh, of the amplitude set is equal to zero that's the first property for second property uh, uh, we have to show that this mu cross nu it's it, 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 it's it's a it's a sigma additive so to, uh, uh, to prove to prove to prove mu cross nu is is a sigma additive so we have to take the countable disjunct union so let uh, let a n cross b n and run us from 1 to infinity b be a disjunct circuits be a disjoint sequence so in uh, in s tensor sigma be a disjoint sequence so in s tensor sigma let this be a disjoint sequence so in s tensor sigma such that their union is again in s tensor sigma such that uh, this uh, a cross b let's take this as the union uh, this is the union and runs from 1 to infinity a n cross b n it's in s tensor sigma okay so uh, we show that we we show that uh, the major of the, the the value of the set for this union is equal to mu cross nu where this a since this union is in s tensor sigma so that in a is in s b is in sigma okay so we show that this is equal to this is equal to summation and runs from 1 to infinity mu cross nu of a n cross b and this uh, we need to verify that is uh, this is equivalent to that is that's uh, mu of a into nu of b is equal to summation and runs from 1 to infinity mu of a n into nu of b n so name it a star here okay so we verify this star for uh, the function uh, mu cross nu to be sigma additive we need to verify this star okay uh, <laughs> So in case uh, either mu of a is equal to zero, uh, this mu of a is equal to zero, or mu of b is equal to zero, then uh, the result holds true. Really, uh, since uh, since this uh, union a n, okay, you can easily verify this. This union a n is subset of a, and union b n is subset of b. This can be easily verified. Let's choose any point here. Uh, so that point uh, belongs to some a n, and that. Uh, that means uh, that must be that point must be belong to A because for if that point is not in A, then uh, if we choose any point in B, then the pair, say x sub, let's choose x is in the union, then x is in at least one A N. So we need to show that x must be in A. For if uh, this uh, x is uh, not in A, let's choose any point y and b then x comma y y is in not in a cross b because x is not in a so but uh, <coughs> but uh, this uh, 
x comma y uh, uh, x is x is in the union but x is not in a so it's actually it's actually trivial you can easily verify this this is uh, trivial uh, this is a uh, this union uh, this a is must be in uh, so uh, let's uh, if we choose uh, uh, to uh, let's 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 verify this uh, so far if uh, let's choose a belongs to the union a n so this means a belongs to some a n and let's choose any point b and b and let b belongs to b n so then uh, then this a comma b it is in a n cross b n a n cross b n but a n cross b n is the union of a n cross b n which is, which is it's subset of actually a cross b so that means a comma b belongs to a cross b which means that a belongs to a, a belongs to so this is very simple if a is in union then a is in some a n then now let's choose any point b in b n then a comma b is in a n cross p n so which is subset of a cross b which implies that a comma b belongs to a cross p which in other words means that a is in a so any member a which is in union is in a similar any member b which is in the union b n it is in b so that means union b n is subset of b actually okay yeah so uh they are, they are subsets of this so it means that uh, if uh, so if uh, if either mu of a is 0 or mu of b is 0 then mu of a n then mu of a n is equal to 0 or nu of b n is equal to zero for all n greater or equal to one. So therefore, therefore, both both the sides of star are equal to zero. Both sides are equal to zero, and hence and and hence star holds and hence star holds. And hence a uh, star holds because both sides of the star are equal to zero in that case. So we assume that. So we assume that uh, we 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 assume that we assume that both are not equal to zero. Both mu of a is positive and mu of b is positive. We assume this. They are both positive numbers. Now uh, this thing uh, which is uh, trivial, chi of a cross b, what is a cross b? a cross b is a disjoint union, chi of the disjoint union, a n cross b n, and runs from 1 to infinity, it's equal to the summation, uh, n runs from 1 to infinity, chi of a n cross b n. So therefore we can see that uh, chi of a x into chi b y is equal to summation n runs from 1 to infinity chi a n of x into chi b n of y. Okay, yeah, uh, let's uh, verify this one. Uh, chi ax it's true for all x comma y it's true for all x belongs to x y belongs to y now let's uh, verify this uh, let's take the following cases now to verify this uh, to verify above equality to verify to verify the above equality above Let's take the following cases. Let's take the following cases. Case one x comma y is in A cross B C. So this is true implies x belongs to A 
and y belongs to b and this also implies that since it's it's it, it's equal to the union x comma y belongs to a in cross b n for some unique because it's a disjoint union from some for some unique n so so that is uh, that's x belongs to a comma y belongs to b it's a here uh, this is a here that's uh, this x uh, belongs to a x belongs to a y belongs to b and this one uh, gives and x belongs to a n comma y belongs to b n so this uh, means that uh, this gives this uh, this equality holds actually so this x in a y is in b so that means this is equal to 1 and x in a and y is in b n for some unique a and b n so th that summation will be equal to 1 because uh, this x is in exactly 1 a and y is in exactly 1 b n and uh, these n's are the same actually they belong to for same n's uh, for same a and b n okay so for the rest of the n's are uh, this uh, x is in a n only but not in the other a n is uh, say say n is equal to 5 then x x x is in a 5 y is in b 5 and uh, uh, this x is not in a n for n not equal to 5 y is not in b n for n not equal to 5 so that means this summation will be equal to 1 so therefore uh, uh, therefore 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 uh, this mu of a into nu of b this is equal to 1 and this is same as the summation n runs from 1 to infinity it's mu of a n into nu of b n so both are equal to 1 case second if this is not in the union case second if x comma y is not in a cross b which is equal to the union obviously so this means uh, x is not in a or y is not in b so that means uh, the the left hand side of the equality is equal to zero and we need to verify that uh, the right hand side is also since it's not in a cross b so it's not in the union that means it's not uh, so that means uh, this uh, first we see this mu cross a into nu cross b is equal to zero so now this x y is, uh, now since uh, since x comma y x comma y is not in the union because this a cross b is equal to the union a n cross b n and runs from one to infinity. So which implies that uh, which implies that uh, uh, which implies that uh, x comma y is not in a n cross b n for all n greater or equal to 1 so which implies that x is not in a n y is not in b n or or y is not in b n for all n greater or equal to 1 this is your n okay this is n. so that means this summation is also equal to 0 summation n runs from 1 to infinity mu of a n into nu of b n is equal to 0 so therefore this equality so hence uh, hence hence the equality holds hence the equality holds so this uh, verifies that uh, this equality holds now uh, as uh, already we have seen that uh, this uh, union b and is subset of b so if we choose any element y from b y from b then this uh, y may not be in the union uh, it may be in the union so if it is in the union it may be belong to more than, than one bi so we define a set here uh, we define a set k it's a set of integers those natural numbers such that uh, this y belongs to bi suppose if uh, this y belongs to say b1 and b3 then this k is equal to 1 comma 3 
I suppose this y is not in any of the any of the bn any any of bn then this k is the empty set so it's actually a subset of set of natural numbers and uh, it depends upon the, whether this y is in bi or not if it is in b1 then one belongs to this set k if it is in say b5 then one belongs to 5 if it is in say b11 then 11 belongs to k okay so it's 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 like that it's like that so uh, let's uh, Okay, yeah. So for each fixed y belongs to B, let's define this set. Okay. For each fixed y in B, for each fixed y in B, let's define k. Let uh, k b is equal to those i's in n such that uh, those i's in n such that y belongs to bi okay such that y belongs to bi so let's define this key then we note that uh, we note that we note that chi a x is equal to chi a x is equal to summation not summation i runs from 1 to infinity but only i is in k those keys chi a i of x this again can be easily verified so as soon as if x is in a then x comma y is in a cross b so if x comma y is in a cross b then this y is in those b i so we can see this uh, x comma y is in exactly one that uh, ai cross bi one of those uh, because y is in bi so so it means that this x must be belong to some ai among those k's actually not uh, other other than those other i's okay so which means that chi a of x for that i is equal to one and the rest it's equal to zero if x is not in a then x comma y is not in a cross b in that case uh, the summation will be equal to zero because x comma y is is not in the union a and cross b and so it's not in particular in, in those uh, case actually yeah so that's that's trivial so we know that this uh so you have to uh, verify this verify this uh, this equality you verify this equality here this is true for all x belongs to x Now this collection a i uh, i belongs to k is disjoint collection. Uh, you can also easily verify this. It's a disjoint collection. The collection a i i is in k is a disjoint collection. Is a is a disjoint collection. So for if uh, for if x belongs to these two sets, say a i intersection a j i comma j belongs to k so this means x belongs to a i comma y belongs to a j i comma j is in k so which means that uh, this uh, this uh, x is in a i so that means uh, uh, that means x comma y because y is in b i it is in a i cross b i and x comma y because y is in also bj because uh, j belongs to k and y is also in aj it belongs to aj cross bj okay so which means that this pair it belongs to two different sets but uh, the but the but the collection a and cross b is a disjoint collection which which is a contradiction which is a contradiction which is a which is a contradiction okay so this uh, collection is disjoint now uh, let's uh, see this one uh, let's go to this previous page uh, this uh, let's apply uh, uh, apply the integration uh, on both sides and we'll see that uh, mu uh, of a mu of a is equal to summation i runs from uh, i belongs to k mu of a i okay so, so let's uh, see this. Uh, 
so uh, uh, let's uh, name it uh, here uh, uh, it is a uh, name it here see see it's a uh, it's uh, it's one okay from one from one from one we conclude that uh, the major of a equal to summation i is in k major of a i major of a i so uh, therefore uh, if you uh, can see that uh, major of a this implies major of a into chi b y it's equal to summation i is in k mu of a i into chi p y you can also write this is called chi b i y so this can be easily verified this is uh, not too difficult and that's same as uh, summation and runs from 1 to infinity mu of a n into chi it's uh, here chi so not the major here into uh, chi b n of y both are same actually you can easily verify this this is not too hard both are same and name this uh, say double star okay Uh, mu a is equal to this uh, now uh, this mu a into chi b y you can easily verify this one uh, if y is in b so this is equal to mu a now if y is in b it means that y is in those uh, b i's uh, so that means this is equal to this summation okay those b i's uh, so that means uh, for uh, since y is in each b i i belongs to k so that each number is equal to each each factor of this product is equal to 1 over this sum so that means this is just summation i belongs to k mu of a i and on this side it's equal to mu of a that's here and if y is not in b then this is equal to zero and this is also equal to zero because y is not in b so that means y is not in those bi's so they are all equal to zero so this sum is equal to zero and same is here same is the case same case is the here if y is in b then y is in b i so y is in only those b i's where i belongs to k and for the rest of the i's it's not in those b i's uh, uh, it's only in b i and it's not in b j where j is not in k so that means uh, this sum will be reduced to this sum if y is in b and if y is not in b then again this is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 both are equal to 0 so this equality holds this is a uh, very trivial and this is true for all y belongs to y for all y belongs to y now again uh, <coughs> uh, those uh, terms y mu of a n equal to 0 does not alter this sum double star and the star that's all disc uh, that's all that that's one that, that, that the sum which we have to verify So we can uh, write here uh, we can write here this uh, since a term since term uh, since a term with mu of a n is equal to zero mu of a n is equal to zero does not alter the sum in star and double star does not alter the sum in star and double star so we assume that uh, they are positive we assume that we assume that uh, mu of a n is positive for all n greater or equal to 1 
no uh, case one if uh, if both uh, if both a and b if both a and b have finite measure have finite uh, measure then double star gives then double star gives uh, it gives that uh, it gives you can uh, you can apply the integration uh, and it gives that uh, uh, the double star gives uh, by using a term by term integration by using term by term integration okay because they are finite here uh, each a n is finite here uh, then by using term by term integration uh, uh, this gives double star gives why why why, why is double star I uh, just uh, oh uh, this is double star okay so this double star gives we can apply the integration on both sides this is mu of a this will be mu of a into mu of b and this will be summation n runs of 1 to infinity mu of n into integration of chi b n of y which is equal to mu of b n because term by term integration is possible here if the function is integrable uh, so we can uh, use this double star this uh, gives uh, this double star gives by integrating by simply integrating double star we get uh, mu of a into nu of b is equal to summation and runs from 1 to infinity mu of a n into nu of b n and hence uh, and hence star holds star holds so in the second case, uh, in the second case, uh, if uh, if either uh, if either uh, if either uh, mu of a is infinity or mu of uh, b is equal to infinity, then what we do in this case? then uh, then we see this summation mu of a n into nu of b n and runs of 1 to infinity is equal to infinity otherwise if it's finite because this sum is the integral otherwise uh, otherwise uh, this sum is actually the integral of this function uh, otherwise uh, otherwise uh, this mu of a into characteristic function of b y is integrable is why it's integrable because otherwise if this is finite then uh, the value of the integral the value of the integral of this function will be equal to this which is a finite so, so this function will define an integrable function so which means that uh, if it's integral function so its integral is equal to mu of a into nu of b which means that uh, which implies that uh, mu of a into nu of b is finite is is finite which is a contradiction because this is infinity either this is infinity or this is infinity so one of them and this uh, they are both positive also and they are one of them is infinity so the product must be equal to infinity which is a contradiction which is a contradiction which is a It's a contradiction as uh, as mu of a into nu of b is uh, it's equal to infinity. So hence, uh, and this summation n runs from one to infinity mu of a n into nu of b n equal to infinity, and this one is also equal to infinity mu of a into mu of b is also equal to infinity so therefore this star holds therefore star holds and hence the theorem follows so this uh, completes the proof of the theorem okay this completes the proof of the <coughs> theorem so in the next theorem we